It is officially go time for the BYU basketball program. And if they have aspirations of being considered among the greatest in BYU history, you can't afford to lose to the Duquesne Dukes. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who are every day is with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto is your team every day. And as such, this is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports. And we are brought to you today by our friends over at Nissan. Are you, you the kind of driver that likes to take things and push it just a little bit further? Ever wonder what, what adventure could be right around the next corner for you? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find that next big adventure. Check them out all today at NissanUSA.com. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. And by the time some of you may have watched this, BYU very well could have already played this game, but it is game day. It'll be a 10.40 a.m. Mountain Time tip for BYU, 11.40 Central Time out there in Omaha, Nebraska. The sixth-seeded Cougars taking on the 11th-seeded Duquesne Dukes. And I'm looking forward to this game because, as I mentioned in the open, if BYU, this team, which I have talked about, has had one of the more remarkable, maybe one of the greatest regular seasons in BYU basketball history, really wants to be considered in the annals of BYU basketball lore as one of the great all-time teams, you cannot afford to lose this game. You go one and done in this tournament, you get upset as the higher seed in this tournament, it is going to uh, cast a pall over the rest of the season. That that I I have no qualm in saying that. That seems probably a little bit harsh, but honestly, think about the history of BYU basketball. Who are the greatest teams? What are they remembered for? They're remembered for Danny Ainge and that dash to glory against a Notre Dame to get BYU to the Elite Eight, the furthest they've advanced in this tournament, 43-ish years, no, 43 years ago, uh, just uh, the celebrating the anniversary of that just a couple of days back. Other things, uh, let's see, going back to BYU and uh, the Jimmer Fredette era. They made that run to the Sweet 16. Had they had Brandon Davies, maybe, maybe they make that run to the Final Four, but they are rem remembered fondly for what Jimmer Fredette was able to accomplish in a BYU uniform. But there are a lot of other teams out there. Remember, not, not that long ago, BYU was a sixth seed and got upset by UCLA, who made a run. Was it to the Final Four? So th there's a lot of BYU teams that have had very, very good seasons. I can remember the Steve Cleveland uh, squad that lost to uh, uh, Jerry McNamara and uh, the Syracuse Orange in that first round matchup. That was a BYU basketball team, that Steve Cleveland squad, that I thought had the capability of making a run to the Sweet 16. And they went one and done, and they're not considered among the greatest. So that brings me to say this. If this team, speaking of this year's BYU basketball squad, wants to be considered among the greatest in BYU basketball history, you can ill afford to lose this game. The good news, I don't see any way BYU loses this game. Uh, no offense to du Duquesne, no offense to everything they've accomplished. Obviously, they snapped a very, very long streak, 46 years uh, without uh, appearing in the NCAA tournament. Really, really cool things. Uh, they've got their coach uh, retiring whenever their season ends. That could be as soon as today. Uh, but the bigger thing is, I think this BYU squad is capable of taking every punch, seemingly, that Duquesne seems to have in their arsenal and finding a counter to it. Uh, we had we've had a couple of guys on my radio station, the KSL Sports Zone, this week uh, talking about Duquesne, Tim Benz and uh, Tristan Freeman, both of them based out there in Pittsburgh, where Duquesne is located, and both of them covering Duquesne heavily. And they've talked about the fact that Duquesne's got two very, very good guards, and uh, Tristan in particular said that they've got the ability to shut down the opposing team's best guard. Well, here's the thing. David James, and I would have countered with this, says that, okay, here's the thing. BYU doesn't actually have a, a ball-dominant guard who really takes the lion's share of these possessions. This is not a Jimmer Fredette type uh, team for BYU. Jackson Robinson one night's doing it. The next night, it feels like it's Dallin Hall. Maybe it's a, a night for Spencer Johnson to go off. Maybe it's Trevin Nell busting out. The thing is, BYU can throw waves after wave after wave of guys at this Duquesne team. And yes, they're able to slow down one guy, but they can't slow down everybody. The other thing is, is that Duquesne, they're relatively... Uh, 
I don't want to say soft, but they are not necessarily a force in the interior. Dusan Mahorchich, who we've talked about, was a BYU recruit three years ago. Uh, he is their big man in the middle, but he's limited mobility-wise. And then Fuseni Drame, uh, their Fuseni, speaking of Duquesne's Fuseni, he's their leading rebounder, but he's a slim uh, 6'7", I think 210 pounds, versus Fuseni Traore for the BYU basketball program, who is uh, Mark Durant referred to him. He is a barrel. He's just an absolute bucket getter with his back to the basket. So I see that BYU has every answer to everything it feels like Duquesne uh, can throw at the Cougars. The only thing that really could slow down BYU is themselves. If they were to go out there in this game against Duquesne and go 6 of 35 from 3, yeah, that's probably going to be a problem for BYU to win this game. They're going to be struggling at that point. Uh, but as some people have pointed out, I think Greg Rebell and I also saw Mitch Harper, my compatriot at KSL Sports, uh, point out that when BYU has made 10 or more threes this season, they're 18 and 3. When they shoot above 32%, I believe they are 18, no, they might be 19 and 2 now. They have got a really, really strong track record. If they shoot their typical averages or even maybe a slightly below average uh, three-point game, but they uh, make north of 10 three-pointers in a game. BYU, uh, for the most part, is well on their way to a victory. I see this Duquesne team ex being extremely limited. Their uh, offensive rating is uh, in the sub-150 category, whereas the defensive rating is in the top 50 in the country. Their only hope is to hope that BYU is not scoring at, at their typical rate. If BYU goes over 70 points in this game, I think the Cougars run away with this victory. So, I say that BYU needs to avoid obviously that first round match, uh, that first round upset, and uh, be having the the really really bad uh, feelings and bad juju of a first round exit uh, exist over this team. But I believe BYU is very very capable of going out and winning this game, and then we'll see what happens. I'm expecting to uh, see Illinois potentially in the next round, and. We've also had some guys on the station this week, Patrick Stevens from the Washington Post, who says that outside of Purdue, and he said not even then, he doesn't trust Big Ten teams. So the pathway, honestly, the pathway is there for BYU in theory to make a run of the Sweet 16 where ostensibly you get a third uh, matchup with Iowa State. And you've beaten Iowa State once at home. You had them on the ropes in Ames. Can you finish the job and punch your ticket to the Elite Eight? That is the path. That is like the dream scenario for BYU. But it all starts with this matchup against Duquesne. Do not overlook the Dukes. Handle your business. Punch your ticket to the round of 32, and then uh, see what you can do. It's, it's all focus on the survive and advance mentality. That's all that matters right now for the BYU basketball team, and you need to avoid at all costs. A very, very uh, tough uh, pill would be to see that first-round exit pop up and, once again, lose as a higher seed in the first round of the NCAA tournament. All right, we'll flip over to BYU football uh, coming up next. I had a chance to catch up with BYU defensive end Logan Latui, a guy that uh, came to BYU as a walk-on transfer from Weber State, established himself as a, a really good uh, option for BYU defensive end under the previous defensive regime, and it appears after an ACL tear and returning midway through last season, he's entrenched himself in the two deep for BYU at defensive end once again. What has been a secret? What has he done to make himself an indispensable part of Jay Hill's defense so far? You'll hear from him next right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. This week's March, March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. Once again, each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, and they like any one of the new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These teams were able to take it to the next level. Let's talk about the Auburn Tigers. They can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC. As they knocked the Florida Gators off in the SEC Tournament Championship, they're set to make a run in the NCAA Tournament. So keep an eye on Bruce Pearl's squad, but there's a million other options out there. No matter what it is, they can match up with our friends over at Nissan. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure with our friends at Nissan. Go to NissanUSA.com to learn more about all three of these models and the features. There's an extensive list of features they have available to you guys once again. So shop NissanUSA.com. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Say goodbye to the busted brackets, obviously, with our friends, because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. The best part about this, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing with America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 wins. You want to bet BYU to cover the spread against Duquesne? If, it, if they do that, you get 200 bucks to play with after that. Just $5 uh, put up could net you 200 bucks to play around with. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all in your bracket. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college troops until they cut down the nets. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. 
Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who are everydayers with us here on the podcast. I uh, want to remind you guys real quick that are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day looking for highlights and uh, you're, you're turning on the volume because of all the shouting that seems to be going on? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming pra- a channel programmed uh, for you every day to bring you the big stories without all the screaming going on. Locked On Sports today brings you the analysis that you can't miss, opinions and news t- streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. I had a chance to catch up with Logan Latui earlier this week after BYU uh, basketball practice. And uh, Logan's a really, really cool story because he is a former uh, player for Jay Hill at Weber State, but he predates uh, coming to BYU uh, before Jay Hill arrived. So when Jay Hill came down as BYU's defensive coordinator, Logan's got to be thinking, okay, I got the best of both worlds. I've already entrenched myself as a contributor at BYU at the Division One slash Power 4 level, but now I have a guy that recruited me out of high school. I know his defense inside and out and so far Logan has been very very good Uh, we had a chance to catch up with Kelly Papinga who is the edges slash defensive end coach for BYU last week and he mentioned his top four uh, defensive linemen included Logan Latui and I think Logan is a little bit of a uh, of an unknown for BYU fans they see number 59 out there uh, playing and they're probably wondering who is that guy Well, his name's Logan Latui. I had a chance to catch up with him, learn more about uh, his path to BYU, what it's been like, how he feels about playing in Jay Hill's defense once again, and a whole lot more. And you'll hear that right now, right here on Locked on Cougars. You're a guy who's battled back from an injury, obviously. To, uh, you got back with midway through last year. So how are you feeling physically right now through this part of spring camp? I'm um, feeling very good. Uh, we had a great offseason with this new strength and conditioning staff. So they really got us right this offseason. So that's probably a big um, thing that's pushed me to be able to perform this spring ball. Now, you're a guy who obviously came from Weber State. You actually predate Jay, even though even though he's here now. How familiar are you with your time at Weber with him taking over the defensive coordinator? Oh, um, when this defense came over here, I was really excited because this is like, when I was over there, I got it down pretty well. So he's relied on me a little bit over here to get these guys going with their assignments and just getting them accustomed to this new defense. So I was excited when he got this job over here. Do you do you like the fact that you are a leader and you're one of the guys that guys can like, okay, explain this to me, like break it down for me here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I'm just glad to play a part in helping others know there's part in this defense because it's very uh, gap sound and if one person's wrong, they can blow that play and they can go for a big gain for the offense. So. It's good to be able to step up and make sure everybody's on the same page with each player of this defense. Now we were talking with Coach Papinga last week, and he talked about that very thing. He said you, our guys got to be you got to be assignment sound with regards to what they're doing out here. You talk about the fact that <coughs> this, it's, assi- it's assignment sound defense. Do you feel like you guys are at a point now where it's kind of becoming where everybody on the defense understands where they need to be on every play at this point? Um, yeah, definitely. We're in that direction right now. This is a, we got a lot of newcomers in this past season. I mean, there's a lot of veterans coming back, but not participating in this spring ball. So it's, uh, we're, we're moving towards that direction. Uh, this spring ball has been good to see where everybody's at. And yeah, mistakes are made now. So we look good on Fridays and or on Saturdays in the fall. When it comes to this defense, what's the toughest part you feel like for a guy to pick it up? Um, probably just trusting that everybody's gonna do their job. Okay. Staying in your own assignment when you see the ball going the other way, it's easy to leave your job and all of a sudden the ball is in your gap. So I think that's the biggest part is everybody just doing their assignment and trusting that each person is going to do their job. Was that an issue last year with some guys maybe doing a little bit more than they should have, you feel like? Um, yeah, I think that's that's the biggest thing you can see with this defense when there's a mistake. Somebody's just not doing their job. Um, that and other things, but that's something we're trying to clean up this season. Now, Coach Pop mentioned you as one of his four guys, kind of that main rotation of defensive ends right now. What does that mean to you to know that you're part of that two deep right now? Oh, uh, just makes uh, it just pushes me to keep going. Uh, we have a good squad with uh, our defensive ends, even with the newcomers. So I know there's a top four right now, but for me, I'm I'm just here to work every day. We got these newcomers coming in; they're pushing as well. So the competition's hot right now, and it's it's good for all of us. 
I wanted to ask you about a young buck in Ephraim Asiata. When we've seen him out here in our media sessions, he seems to be a guy who just absolutely brings it every day. Yeah. I know he's had he's been slowed up a little bit recently, but what have you made of his performance so far? Uh, yeah, he has high potential. He can be very good. He's he came in here pretty quick and got the defense down. Yeah. Um, I've known him before this, so he's I've always known he was a great athlete. Uh, he's smart on and off the field, so excited to see him continuing to get bigger, build into that frame that we need him right now, and he's going to be a good play for BYU. Where do you feel your chief strength is as a defensive end? Um, I just feel, I think with these past scenes, I, I've, I've built a pretty good IQ, so that's where I try to base my game off of, knowing what the what's going to happen, mm -hmm. and that gives me a better chance of making a play. Being the smartest guy on the field always helps, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, last thing for me, I guess last two things for me. Uh, when it comes to having your father-in-law on staff here with Jack, how is that? Oh, that's, I mean, it's an interesting dynamic, but that guy is, <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's a good guy. He's been good for uh, me and my, my little family here, so it's good always to have him around. He's sometimes over here babysitting my son, so okay. he's always a good extra help of hands. For good me. to have grandpa around, yeah. right? Hey, Grandpa, watch, watch, watch Junior for a minute. And the last thing for me is, what do you feel like you still need to, I guess, improve on the most as a defense throughout the rest of spring? <clears throat> um, everybody's being gaps down, honestly. Uh, we got to stop the run first. We went on first and second downs, and that goes by stopping the run, staying in your sound, staying in your gaps, staying in your assignment, and winning your one-on-one. So that's probably the biggest thing. Don't get too caught up in doing more than what you're supposed to do. There you go, Logan Latui, BYU defensive end, and a big thank you to him for taking the time to join us right here on the podcast. And it was fun to hear him talk about how it's uh, been a good uh, thing for him to be at BYU. As he mentioned, his father-in-law is the ever-so-famous hashtag Jack DeMooney, and Jack is just an absolutely effervescent personality. Uh, but I really enjoyed getting to know Logan, and it feels like uh, he is a guy that is one of those unsung key cogs, it feels like, in this BYU defense. He talked about the fact he's taking on a little bit more of a leader Leadership role, helping some of the younger guys like me from Asiata get up to speed in this defense and understand what Jay Hill and Kelly Papinga and the rest of the defensive line coaches, Siona Pua, as well as Chad Kaha'aha, as and Gary Anderson. They've got a bevy of defensive line coaches, what all of them are demanding of their guys up front. And a guy like Logan already having his experience having played in this defense, he is a big resource because player to player can be a lot different dynamic and a much uh, more I guess, relaxed and uh, uh, just better learning environment for guys versus coach versus player. I'm not saying it's, it's the wrong uh, thing in any way, shape, or form, but different people learn different ways. And Logan can help out guys who may not understand it coming from their coach, but he can show them in practical terms on the field quite literally, here's what you need to do. And that's that's something that cannot be overlooked is the fact that Logan can do that for guys around him. And uh, I wish him the best. Uh, it's a really, really cool scenario that he's got playing out here with his father-in-law and staff. He's part of a division. Division one power four program who started out his career at the FCS level. He's made good on every bet he's made on himself to this point. And I would expect that Logan will continue to uh, make his family and also the BYU football program proud as they move forward here. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we'll finish out today's show. I had a couple of notes uh, from BYU spring camp earlier this week. I wanted to pass along to you guys. A round of the, this, this edition of Locked on Cougars coming up next. Stay with us. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. It is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as Fire TV sticks. You can plug into your existing TV and give you access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, the college basketball tournament, no matter what it is, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels app for uh, to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands. All for free. That includes all of us here at the Locked On Podcast. Cast Network and most of the pro uh, big pro leagues as well as college conferences as well. Uh, so Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, including March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. If you're interested in that, so check out Fire TV channels on the Fire TV and Alexa devices today. If you're not done so already, trust me, you want to check it out today. That's Amazon.com/slash Locked On Fire TV to check it out. Amazon.com/slash Locked on Fire TV. 
Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at UCCU. UCCU has elevated the checking accounts by enhancing them with more benefits, more savings, and more online protections than ever before. A lot more, my friends. Paired with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools, elevated checking is a must-have financial product packed with lifestyle security and financial benefits. The lifestyle benefits alone include cell phone protection, roadside assistance, telehealth with 24-7 access to licensed health professionals with zero copay, most importantly, and exclusive savings on travel, shopping, and dining. And the best part is elevated checking is free. We do any one of the following. Use your debit or credit card 15 times or more a month. Make a monthly direct deposit of $500 or more or maintain an average daily balance of $1,500 in your account. Otherwise, UCCU's elevated checking is just $6 a month. So visit uccu.com to open an elevated checking account online or stop by any branch to open that account in person. It's all courtesy of your friends over at UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you for being with us. If you've not done so already, please uh, sign up for our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. It's been a really, really fun way to interact with you out there uh, in our in our listener group and also in the uh, Cougar fan base. It's literally a way to uh, text directly with me. A lot of people out there uh, love uh, the ability to just kind of interact back and forth one on one, and it's a really, really a unique way. It feels like to connect with you guys out there. So if you have any uh, intentions or aspirations of how having extra access to myself and learning more about the BYU football program. Uh, maybe when the podcast, you've already watched it for the day uh, and there's news breaking. Well, the Locked On Cougars Insider Group gets the first uh, kind of uh, news I've got for them. And that's the way to do it is to sign up. It's in the show notes below, whether you're watching this on YouTube or uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, Stitcher, all the different uh, podcast services out there. Click on the, click on it in the show notes. 14-day free trial, $5 a month after that if you deem it uh, worth your while. And appreciate all the support y'all have already given and I encourage all of you, if you have not done so already, to join us there. All right, before we go on today's show, a couple of things uh, from the first day of the NCAA tournament in Salt Lake City. I went over to the uh, Delta Center and I uh, took part in some of the media sessions as well as watching some of the open practices. Uh, the two media sessions I, I most uh, took part in uh, were Samford and then Gonzaga. That's a 12-5 matchup, uh, ostensibly the matchup that BYU thought they might have uh, if they were to have played at the Delta Center. But uh, Mark Few, I had I had an opportunity to ask a question. And I asked him, hey, Mark, with all of the years you've been traveling to Utah to play BYU in the West Coast Conference, do you feel that all that travel is going to essentially give you guys a leg up and being familiar with the territory and be an advantage for you guys. And he said, not really, but then unprompted. Uh, Mark Pope said that, hey, I would just want to say BYU has been very, very good this year. It's really cool to see what they have done, especially considering it's essentially the same team that we had in the West Coast Conference. And all of us know how poorly they performed that final year in the WCC. But he said it's been great to see what they've done this year. And uh, essentially, he said, I can wish them well. And you can tell that Mark Few has got a lot of uh, – praise and admiration for BYU basketball. Mark Pope, obviously his time uh, knowing Dave Rose. I know he's very close with guys like Tim Lacombe as well. Uh, so you can tell there's still a, a, a it, it's, there's an admiration there from the Gonzaga side of things. And I think it's, it's a vice versa thing. Gonzaga and BYU were fierce rivals on the court and BYU seemingly could never get over the top against the Bulldogs. And they, well, they never did in their air in the West coast conference, but there was always the admiration, whereas some more rancor and just, just ill feelings with a program like St. Mary. So a little bit different dynamic, but it was cool to hear Mark Pope unprompted in the middle of that answer, uh, give props to BYU basketball. So just a, kind of a fun tidbit. I also had a chance to see Heath Schreier. Uh, those of you who may who know who, who he is, uh, two different stints as a BYU basketball assistant coach on Steve Cleveland staff. And then one year under Dave Rose, he is now the AD at McNeese uh, and they're going to be taking on Gonzaga had a chance to chat him up for a minute. He's very excited for his basketball program. As you might imagine, they've won 30 games this year. It's really cool stuff from McNeese, but he also has talked about the fact that he was very appreciative and always enjoyed his time in Utah. So it was cool to hear from him and obviously have him back in town. So uh, some cool things. It's unique uh, opportunities that come out of the NCAA tournament. And I encourage all of you, if you have the opportunity to do so, even if you, you don't have a dog in the fight, NCAA tournament games are just unlike any other spectacle out there. Phil like and you just go have a great time uh root on the lower seat they have a chance to spring that upset and bust your bracket that's the best part about all this so if you have a chance to get out to the delta center uh today uh, speaking of thursday or saturday when the second round goes down do it it's worth it it's absolutely worth it i have always enjoyed uh going out to these tournament games when they're in town here in salt lake city all right uh before we go also i mentioned some byu football notes i wanted to pass along to you guys uh from monday's practice uh keep an eye on the name Pokai haunga i'm not the only person saying this um 
Uh, and I've also heard people say it's Pokai Haonga. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to ask him directly at some point uh, about how you pronounce his name correctly. But the one thing, even if you can't pronounce his name correctly, do not uh, forget that his name overall, because this is a kid who has been very, very good early on in camp here for BYU. Does he supplant a guy like Miles Davis as the backup running back for BYU? I'd be hard-pressed to say that because Miles Davis has shown really well in spring ball as well. Uh, but Haonga coming home off of a mission, he looks like he has not skipped a beat since his high school days, and that's a very exciting proposition for BYU. Uh, another note is that uh, BYU, the quarterback battle, uh, it's very much neck and neck. Uh, it's 50-50. It, it very much still remains that way between Gary Bohannon and Jake Retzloff. But, folks, Trayson Borgay, and I, I know other people have mentioned this already this week, he has got a very very nice arm and the ability to uh, deliver the ball down the field with ease. He had a fantastic uh, pass down the sideline. I believe it was to Chase Roberts, if I recall correctly. And then he threw a, a, a touchdown pass uh, to JoJo Phillips later on that drive. He was actually the only quarterback in the media viewing portion uh, to lead BYU to a touchdown drive on the day. Uh, and in talking with some of our practice insiders, one in particular, I asked him after that, like, hey, is Borgay actually doing that stuff on uh, on the regular? And he said that, yeah, right now it feels like Borgay is uh, kind of entrenched himself as that number three quarterback. So we'll see. I, it could be that BYU has Jake Retzloff, the incumbent, uh, Gary Bohannon, a transfer, and then a walk-on transfer in Trayson Borgay, uh, essentially making up the triumvirate of BYU quarterbacks in the 2024 season. It's it's an interesting dynamic, and I'm still expecting a thinning of the herd at quarterback because there's just way too many bodies in there. We'll keep an eye on how things develop, but it's good to hear the Trayson Borgay, a guy who, by the way, uh, didn't uh, have BYU help him get into school. He essentially did it on his own and then joined BYU as a walk-on. Uh, it's cool to see him doing his thing, and he does have FBS starting experience at Western Michigan, and you cannot discount that as a uh, potential number three quarterback for BYU. And I guess this is the final note I'll pass along here. Uh, um, we're going to be back out there, by the way. Uh, no, it was actually it was supposed to be out back out there on Friday for Alumni Day. They have since changed that, uh, but I'll do some digging around and talk to some people you guys know how I do. I, I, I talk to a lot of people. Uh, or I call them our practice insiders uh, who are there, and I'll be able to pass along some intel hopefully uh, later on this week or early next week. But the final note I got for you guys on today's show is I'm – I'm starting to believe that BYU is going to have a better offense simply due to the fact there are so many guys back who are on this offense that are just essentially pissed off with how things went last year. You guys have watched Connor Pay and heard Connor Pay on this podcast talk about the fact that he is so dissatisfied with last season. And I get a sense that he is just like kind of the tip of the iceberg when it comes to that, just that I said, that kind of that pissed off mentality that this team has. You can kind of see how they're operating in spring ball. Now, is that all show and it's bravado and it's false hope they're trying to uh, project for themselves? It, sure, it could be. But I get the sense that just with the continuity, the talent that uh, experienced the ups and downs of last season for BYU, particularly on the offense, they're absolutely intent on improving this season. And like I said, we'll see if it ultimately bears out that way. But there is a there's a bit of a chip uh, on the shoulder for this BYU offense. And I think that could serve them very very well uh, this year in the Big 12 Conference. All right, that is going to do it for this edition of the podcast. Uh, enjoy the game if you watch this before that. Afterwards, what a horrific loss. What an incredible win. What are we going to do when talking about Illinois? Whatever happens, we'll talk about it on tomorrow's podcast. Uh, so we got it all covered for you guys. And, of course, you do it right here on Locked on Cougars.